shot, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure, unless she didn't like the guy, that it was a problem. <laughs> but, um, but the idea, if we were to kind of transfer that, uh, what if our current students in a couple of years were asked that same question? What is the positive thing that they would say about, about that? Um, and we are up here. Uh, let me introduce our kind of starting panel here. Dale Munholland, as everybody knows, an Arvada High School grad, he was at the beginning of the list there. And we kind of have selected the three of us to talk because we represent kind of three phases of Arvada High School itself. Dale is kind of the old school, right? <laughs> Not that he's old, but he knows Arvada High School uh, as a much different place. And he's seen all of the changes from when he was a student to what it is now and, and, and all of that. Me, I've been, I'm kind of the transitionary phase. I was thinking about it, and I was doing the math before, um, before I uh, was getting ready to talk, and this is my 12th year at Arvada High School. Um, and I'm like, holy smokes. And in 12 years, I've been to 18 principals, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it kind of, but it kind of felt, <laughs> 17. It kind of felt like it there for a while, right? So I went through all that crazy transitional yeah. stuff. Another transition that I was thinking about is when we just talk about staffing and our school. You know, in the English department, when I started here, we had 15 English teachers. I mean, we have, we have full time. And this year, we have, if you count all of our half time, part time, this and that, it really adds up to like seven. So it's, it's a lot of change, and we've seen that, that population of the school go down. I mean, I know there's some budget cuts that affect that, but there's also the population of the environment. And then Courtney Baker, um, who, by the way, taught here last year and uh, <laughs> teaches, teaches chemistry. I mean, I've had people say to me, hey, who's that girl with the short blonde hair? I had somebody ask me today. Um, and I said, oh, she's a science teacher here at Arvada High School. But you know how it's happened sometimes the way this building is set up? That, that first floor science people, they're like troglodytes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't find them anymore. Um, and so we represent the, the kind of changing concept of both the staff, okay, and of the building itself. And so that's, that's kind of how um, we put our group together. Um, one of the realities that I was just talking about is that we have declined numbers as students. Um, Kathy mentioned, are we a viable school? Are we going to continue? And I believe that we are. But I think also we can't just sit there and say, oh, we're out of high school. We've been here for 100 years, so we're just going to continue to be. Um, the numbers that I heard, uh, and I know that there are different ways to look at these numbers, but there are somewhere around the number of 200 freshmen <coughs> who could attend our Nevada high school this year because that's their articulation area who are not. And they are going, they are open enrolling to other places. Imagine if we had 200 more freshmen and 200 more sophomores and 200 more juniors, etc. Now, do we need to recruit another 800 people? No. But do we need to think about what we're doing as a building so that we can move forward? Does our current mission and vision fit what we need to be doing? And how do I, we identify ourselves? make it something that is positive for us, and most importantly, for our clientele. And so, uh, one of the things that we looked at was, schools aren't businesses, but in some ways we have to borrow and operate the way that businesses do, especially in current times, you know. We don't just get all the kids that live in our area anymore with open enrollment. So we have to do some recruiting and finding of clientele and defining what we are as a business, all right? So we're going to talk about three business models that have adapted or not adapted to the changing environment that they were in. And I'm starting with Kodak, and that's why the picture is up just of the Kodak symbol over there. The Kodak company, well, you all know the logo, owned film. They had, remember when you used to drive through the future, drop off your pictures, come back two days later and pick them up and that whole thing? Kodak, Kodak thought that was going to happen forever. In 1975, Kodak invented the first digital camera. And they shelved it. They said, no one's ever going to go to that. People like pictures that you can hold. People like taking things through and doing it. I was asking Karen a question earlier. 
how do you develop your pictures? She's like, because she owns a photography company. She's like, well, I, I send them. Everything's digital. So that whole, the Kodak Instamatic and that whole piece, and Kodak never caught on. Their sales started plummeting in the uh, late 1900s, early 20th, or 21st century, in the early 2000s. The first thing they did, that their CEO did, was say, well, September 11th really affected he did. This is in the public records. And so he was like, wait, it's just people stop taking pictures after September 11th. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. And so what they decided was our business is down and they dumped money into advertising. They still didn't touch anything with digital. They stayed with the idea there will always be film. Long story short, Kodak filed for Chapter 11 in January. They never caught on to the idea that they're going to have to adapt to their clientele. They were caught up with Shutterfly. Yeah, well, and, and when, I, when I look at my phone, I can take better pictures with this thing than I could take with any Kodak camera I ever owned, right? So they never made those adaptable changes, and it cost them. Our next example, Oral, you're not writing anything down. But what we're going to do, and what Dale's talking about with being honest, is we want to define, before we start going into what are we going to be and how do we define ourselves, uh, what are we? What, what is our existing state? So what I want you to do as a table is have some discussion, and then you're going to report out either two words or two phrases which describe our Vada High School, what are we now? Okay, any questions? You know what we're doing, Kurt? He's good. We get over here. So define our Vada High School right now, either two words or two phrases. Determine it as a table. Please don't send this to Sandy. You guys have.
rich conversation there and I have stopped you. Um, what we're going to do is just kind of cruise around the room and hear your two words or uh, phrases. We're not really going to make judgment statements about them or, or do it. There's too many tables going through. If it's something for clarification, we might ask a little bit of that, but we don't want this to be an extended time because really I think uh, it's going to be important to define what are we now but the more important work is going to be uh, kind of the next step. What do we want to become? Uh, what do we see ourselves as, um, what do we need to adapt into kind of a thing? Um, so I'll start in the back corner. They were just outstanding. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, I think it's, it's a cool thing for us to start the year of what is our current reality, too. We're hearing it's it's not like raw. It's not like everybody's like it's hell. We can't survive this. I mean, it's nothing. It's nothing that's overwhelming. It's all stuff for me. I mean, one of the things when I talk in public about our Nevada high school, and I had a conversation at the golf course with we went golfing. Uh, Jeff Wassinger and Chrissy was there, and Rick and I. We all did a let's play a last day of golf on Monday, and we go to Westwoods, and of course all we run into are a bunch of retired Jeffco teachers. Right, because they don't do anything but golf. So, so I'm talking to a few of them, and there was Kendorf and Morris and Ludwig and some other people. And right, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. Um, and and I won't name names, but one of them said something negative to me about our Valley High School. And I kind of called him on it. Well, I didn't kind of call him on it. I called him on it. I said, yeah. Look, man, we need you guys supporting us. We, you're the you're the people out of the community. We need the positive word. You know and you know everyone in the social studies department. You like those people. Why are you trashing? Because it's not what you once were, what it used to be. Guess what? Things change. The world changes. Our bad high school has changed. But we've heard a lot of good things right here in this conversation. There's nothing here that's overwhelming for us that we're like, uh, to go to work, you yeah, have to walk through eight metal detectors. You know, it's craziness and cooey high or something. That's not even old. <laughs> All the other people are like, <laughs> um, so that, that's our current reality, and I think it's a good place for us to kind of get tethered to and understand. Um, Matt and Jamie are going to lead us in this next step called 126, which is going to kind of talk, talk to us, uh, have ourselves talking about where do we want to go.